What's up, everybody? Scott here with The Gaming Outsider. On this week's episode, we got lots of news to discuss, including the PS5 pricing and release date, also Microsoft's acquisition of ZeniMax, which includes Bethesda. New games discussed include Super Mario 3D All-Stars, Other Side, Crisis Remastered, and Paradise Killer. You won't want to miss it. This is The Gaming Outsider. Greetings, programs, and welcome to episode 313 of The Gaming Outsider, a video game podcast with a focus on our incredible community. It's Monday, September 1st. I'm your host, Scott Clark, and joining me are my friends, Zach Parkerson. Hey, man, there's some news this week. There's quite a bit of news. Yeah. We're going to we're gonna have to like limit ourselves to how long we talk about the news. Also joining us, Chris Behrensmeyer. What up, yo? Welcome back, buddy. Good to have you back. It's been, it's been a minute. Yeah, it feels good to be back. That's good, man. Good to see you. Good to see your face. Good to see you smiling. It's okay to see your beard. It's okay. I just realized that the side of your head says licks. It says, <laughs> this is why my headphones say licks. Yeah. I can't take it off to see it, but anyway. Licks. <laughs> before we get into the, <laughs> into the bevy of news that we've got, I want to remind everybody, this is the last time we can mention it, it is Community Game Night this Friday, September 25th at 8 o'clock Central Time. Uh, you won't want to miss it. We had a blast last time. And uh, I have games to give away. Did I mention what games we're giving away on the episode? You did. Or, okay, so I won't say them again, but there's a good stack of, uh, you know, not brand new games, but older games. We're just going to give them away to people that show up and whoever calls them gets them, I guess. So we're going to have some fun. Don't know what games we're playing yet. We're basically saying meet up and then whatever you have, we'll make you a group with someone else that has that game and let's just have some fun playing. I'm already planning to play some Fall Guys. Sorry, guys. I just I need to play some Fall Guys with 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 my peeps. Um, is, I'll, is Tony Hawk online? Yeah, yeah. Let's play that. Let's get that going. Play a little All horse. Right. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah. How does that work? You got to make a trick, and then the other person has to make the exact same trick. That's exactly right. Huh? That's got to be hard, man. It's I don't, so I, fun. I pl- I played OG Tony Hawk a little bit this weekend. That uh, has to have aged like. Uh, milk not as bad as i was expecting oh okay i was pleasantly surprised i am terrible at the game yeah completely terrible i have no idea what i'm doing but uh, it did not look nearly as bad as i was i was expecting and the music is great but yes. hear more about that on an upcoming patreon episode but uh as for the community game i know there's been a lot of talk of playing is it among us oh yeah sure everybody's been talking about that one online i haven't played it yet it sounds like a secret hitler type of game like a yes. find a murderer yeah, or whatever yeah. I played it. Is it good? It's fun. Yeah, it's, it is very much Werewolf, The Resistance, See Your Hill. It is very much that kind of game. Okay. About. I'm intrigued. I, I know it's free on mobile, and it is cross-platform with that and PC. And on PC, even, it's like five bucks. But unfortunately, it's not on Mac, so I will have to go to uh, mobile if I, if I do play that. But I'm looking forward to Fall Guys for sure. Well, let's go ahead and jump right into the news because, like Zach said, there is a ton of things to talk about. First off, some new trailers, a game called Foreclosed, which is releasing on in 2021. Got a trailer for Amnesia Rebirth, as well as The Uncertain Light at the End, which is going to be on Steam October 8th and then Consoles 2021. We finally got the uh, reveal or price reveal and date reveal for the PS5 at Sony's PS5 Showcase, along with several trailers of games that they showed. Got some new Oculus games announced for their uh, for their VR headset. Their VR headset, of course, it's a VR headset. Also, we got some new classic games coming to Nintendo Online. And uh, Michael, is it Michael or Michelle? Michelle Ancel. Michelle Ancel retires uh, over at, uh, is he actually with Ubisoft proper? Or is it? He had a, I think it was something like Wild Sheep Studios or something like that. Gotcha. And then lastly, the big news to drop today, Microsoft acquires ZeniMax, which is the parent company to Bethesda. So. Man, so many bases to cover here. Who wants to start and where do you want to start? I mean, let's start with the biggest news of the week, right? Michelle Ancel retiring? Come on. <laughs> Zach that hurts. bringing in the bringing in the, the, the B level stories. That's not okay, that's not B level. He is I mean, I don't know. If He's, it happened last week, I would probably be a little bit more like, oh, sit up and notice, but this is a pretty big week. Right, but this is I mean, this is a man who used to be called Francis Shigeru Miyamoto. Right. You know, I mean, it's a pretty significant departure from video games. Also, that means he has two different video games he's leaving in development hell. So, good job, Michelle. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I don't know. It's just really weird. This is just personal to me because Beyond Good and Evil is a game dear to me. So I just want to talk about uh, I'm bummed he's leaving. And you know what? I think we'll I guess he hasn't put out a game in like a decade. So maybe we won't feel it. Well, I was going to ask you, how much influence do you think he was having on Beyond Good and Evil 2? I assume I would assume. I remember he went out and cried when it was announced and stuff. Oh, really? He was he was in all the development diaries. They were doing like weekly video th- messages. If you sign up on their newsletter, mm-hmm. he was pretty involved, man. But now he's gone. And uh, no offense, but Beyond Good and Evil is Michelle on sale to me. I I could I probably it. agree with that. You know, there's just my interest uh, has pretty much bottomed out on BG and E two, and I imagine that's probably true of a lot of fans. So this seems kind of like a dick move. On his well, part. we also don't know how long that game is out. Right. When it comes out so, in 2025. Right. And what's he doing? He's going to like preserve wildlife? Yeah, he's going to a wildlife sanctuary to work there. Wasn't he working on Wild? A game, a game called Wild? Yeah. Yeah. He left. Well, he, you know, based on how well he treated that, let's uh, hope he does a little better at the sanctuary. Ooh. Shots fired. Yeah. Shots fired. But anyway, fired. that's obviously not the biggest news story. I just knew we, we weren't going to talk about it if I didn't talk about it at the top. Okay. CB? Uh, well, you already know I want to talk about Zenimax. Yes. <laughs> this, we, I, I was at work, and I, I, my phone started blowing up because I, you know, I'm actually working now. <laughs> so, like, I was the last one to find out about this, but tell everybody what's going on. So, Microsoft has purchased Zenimax, which owns a bunch of studios. Um, not just uh, Bethesda, but, oh, God. I, I had my, my notes here. Well, but Bethesda the, Game Studios, Arcane, they uh, would also own, oh man, who Machine Games, who does yeah. Wolfenstein, they own id now. id is an Xbox exclusive developer now, that's wild. Um, and then, man, who is a Tango Gameworks, which is um, Shinji Mikami's studio, right, Evil Within people. That's a, that's a pretty major acquisition. Yeah. C- correct me if I'm wrong, but when I read this news story, the first thing I thought was that this is the video game equivalent of Disney picking up Star Wars. Uh, I would say it's, well, it's Star Wars or Marvel. Like, Star Wars or Marvel. Yeah. I mean, right. Well, when Disney bought Marvel, right? That wasn't, they weren't what they are now. Uh, but, but you know what? Disney underpaid for Star Wars, and I would say Microsoft probably overpaid for Zenimax. Well, and that was, that was to be. My point too is because they paid what a billion dollars, seven and a half billion dollars. No, 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 that's for Zenimax. I'm talking about oh, when for Star Wars, Wars got it was sold. four billion, four, four billion dollars. So, Immediately donated to charity. Shout out to George Lucas for that baller move. That is a baller move. Holy cow! Yeah, yeah well, seven and a half billion cash, <laughs> which is nuts. So, what does this mean for Microsoft's relationship? With uh, Bethesda, obviously they're going to be owned by them. Well, what that means is that these games, Bethesda games, all that are going to be available on Game Pass on launch day. So your Fallout's, your Bethesda's, your yeah. Zach, you're shaking your head at me. I should, it's just well, it's just insane to think about. Come play Elder Scrolls Six here for a service you're probably already paying for, Game Pass, or you can go pay seventy dollars on the on the other people's platform. That's if they even release it on PS Five, well, you know. That's just, it's just, it's hard to wrap your mind around all of these games will be absolutely, you know, borderline free, right? Pennies based on what you're paying. Mm-hmm. Or you can go pay $70 at the competitor. Yeah. Uh, I, th- this whole deal just blows my mind because first off, pro- props to them for keeping the, everything in place like Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo for being exclusive deals for PlayStation. The, the bigger thing that I took from this, though, was the next statement that Phil Spencer made, that future games will be on a case-by-case basis uh, in terms of exclusivity. So right. That's not a direct quote, by the way. I didn't actually get it word for word on here, but he I said case-by-case case for sure. Yes, he did say case-by-case case for sure. Uh, the, like, the repercussions from this are just huge. Because now Microsoft has the ability to just be like, you know what? No, Elder Scrolls Six is going to be Microsoft o- I, Xbox only. Do you know how many con- how many Xbox consoles that would sell? Yeah, if it was Xbox exclusive. And to be clear, just so our listeners know, 
I, I actually am going to have a rebuttal to Chris's excitement here in just a minute. But, you know, this is not me being super excited for Xbox because I want Xbox to win because I'm an Xbox fanboy. That's not the case. I am always cheering for the underdog. And to me, going into this generation, Xbox is the underdog, and I always want the underdog to succeed. Well, That's why I'm excited about this. I, I'm not a fan of... You know me. I hate exclusive games. That was going to be my rebuttal. That's, that's what I don't like about it. Because I... Ugh. But this makes an interesting dynamic. Because games like Elder Scrolls VI, Starfield, any future Wolfenstein, any future Fallout, it gives leverage to Microsoft. Be like, mm -hmm. oh, you you want to make a Spider-Man game, but keep it only on the PlayStation. Well, we're going to make Elder Scrolls and keep it only on the Xbox, unless you make it for both consoles. It, I don't know, man. You're saying it's giving them bargaining chips? Is that what you're saying? It, it puts a lot of power in their corner. So they right. could they could basically say to Sony, Fine. put your games that are exclusive, put them also on Xbox, and we'll scratch right. your back, you scratch ours. Because we'll trade you a Starfield for a God of War 2. Because, yeah. well, Microsoft, Phil Spencer, they've all been saying for a long time, they want to reach as many players as possible, even if it means putting Game Pass on other consoles. Ooh, that's an interesting thought. So That's where, that's where immediately where my mind went when I read this news, is that you don't don't lock up these games for Xbox exclusives. Lock them up as Game Pass exclusives, and then when Game Pass inevitably comes to the Switch or whatever, now you can stream Elder Scrolls Six on your Switch. I mean, that's true. Because can you imagine if if the deal finally goes off that Game Pass comes to Switch, my, Microsoft just goes fine. Let's let's put some Switch games into Game Pass that right. Xbox players can play with Nintendo on board. Then. The possibility of bringing PlayStation into that fold because they, w I want a level playing field for all players, regardless whether you play on PlayStation or Xbox or Switch or s for those like five people out there that play on Stadia. <laughs> I, I, it it's just th this this deal it just blew my mind the moment I read it because I honestly yeah. thought it, it would never happen. I think we're we're thinking a little pipe dream a little bit. I mean. It as much as I want to play Nintendo games on my Xbox, that, I just that seems like a long ways away if it happens. Or I, does it? That that's that does seem like a little bit of a pipe dream, but the idea of Game Pass on Switch does not seem like that big of a stretch at all. I can see that happening first, yes. Understandable. But I would I would call that inevitable even. You can you can use this recording three years from now. It's inevitable. Game Pass on Switch. But it does kind of break down some of those barriers when people talk about like, oh, this is only going to be exclusive on this console. I mean, already Microsoft is like extending the outlets branch going, hey, we, we bought the studio. These we're going to keep these as PlayStation exclusives. They could have broke and immediately said, no, they're going to be on Xbox as well with Ghostwire and um, Deathloop. Deathloop. Yeah. They're respecting the exclusivity of that being on PS5, at least for timed exclusive. All right. So Microsoft will have as many exclusive launch window games as Sony. Mm. This, like this is huge, platform. guys. This is really big. And I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's yeah. what the second largest uh, acquisition for a game company. Yeah, guys, I, I looked up some numbers because I like the numbers. But yeah, the, this is the second biggest acquisition ever. Because Supercell was bought by Tencent for eight point six billion, which is to say that's a clash of clans, folks. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then Microsoft's other biggest acquisition was Mo Yang for two and a half billion. And then Sony's biggest acquisition, which it just seems like peanuts compared to this, is three hundred eighty million dollars for Gaikai, the streaming technology. And that's a word I haven't heard in a minute. <laughs> Gaikai, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then and then the most they've ever paid for a studio was the two. What was it like two seventy nine million for Insomniac or whatever? Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's well. These guys are playing in different ballparks. Do you also think it's a coincidence that they decided to announce this mere days after the PS five showcase? It's, that was uh, that was totally intentional, right? Well, and well, and none of us knew this. Yeah, 
Right. Yeah, that's true. That, yeah, there wasn't even rumors about this. Yeah, I'm. I'm. This com- flew completely under the radar. But the the thing that blows my mind, going back to your numbers conversation, Zach, the fact that a, a super like Supercell bought for like over eight billion dollars for a mobile game company. Right, but how much money is Clash of Clans bringing in every day? Who cares? It's a mobile <laughs> game company. Uh huh. You bought ZeniMax, which has multiple studios, uh, which has Bethesda, which has made some of the largest selling games of all time. Right. For less than a mobile game company. Like that that blows my mind. Like to me, to me, it seems like they underpaid. I don't, know. I don't know, man. The money in those mobile games, they've I guarantee you they've made that money. And then some. Oh, I sure. I'm willing oh, yeah. to bet they have. But then you have what two point four billion dollars for Mojang, the people that made Minecraft. Like right. That's a twenty dollar game though. I know. A twenty dollar game. They paid two point four billion. And that's one Man, game. All, of, all of this is really basically like Disney robbed George Lucas for four billion dollars at Star yeah. Wars, man. Well, yeah. George George Lucas didn't exactly get robbed because he still has some merchandising rights. So like right, everything yeah. they sell, he, he also, still makes many dollars. I think he also just want to wash his hands of the whole affair. Yeah. But it's just, he's more tired of fanboys than anybody. What are you talking yeah. about, man? They're bringing him back. Yeah. Uh, I will say, I mean, anybody upset, it, it was kind of, even as a PlayStation primary gamer, it was a little really fun today watching online as all the PlayStation people are upset at the possibility you know, not getting Elder Scrolls, but then, you know, rejoice when Spider-Man is only on their console in Avengers. Yeah. That's nice little penance. A, a lot yeah. of forums that was hilarious reading. Like, the Sony fanboys forever that have been like, oh, exclusive games are the best thing to, for any console. And now they're right. like, exclusivity's bad. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watching people flip in real time has been a lot of fun. Mm, eat, <laughs> eat, watching them eat crow just makes my day. And that's <laughs> why I'm being clear that I am not trying to fanboy this news. I'm excited for Microsoft to be able to catch up and even the playing field a little bit more than uh, I'm going to have both consoles at some point. It doesn't matter. Right. You know, the, the exclusivity doesn't bother me, but there are some people that are only getting one console and they get it. And but, if you're only, if you're only getting one console and you're a digital gamer, there is absolutely no reason to not get the Xbox series. Well, X I mean, Spider-Man got a war that I mean, is are, not compared but, to the value of game pass. I, I get you, especially for the price. Well, not not to mention, all of these companies' older games are going to be put onto Game Pass, right? Yeah. So they just because we're gonna we're jumping ahead here with Sony's, uh, their uh, what what they call it the the press conference they, they did where they did the review the showcase just, the showcase yeah I could not think of the word showcase they when they when they did their answer to game pass which is the service that's going to give you all these older games including fallout for it was on there but it's really not their answer to game pass though it's not no you're right it's yeah. it's all older games it's still really cool you know right. I mean, the, the, but it, so, it is kind of a weird i mean we could do you want to talk about that now i guess but well sure i mean that's fine well just the the, the playstation plus thing you're talking about with ps5 is i mean it's a selection of mostly first party games that if you're buying a PS5 at launch anyway, you have most likely already played. Well, people like us, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I would think the majority of people who are pressing F5 to refresh the Walmart pre-order right. page right. are the kind of people who are not being benefited by this. Plus, on top of that, Xbox now has EA. I know we talked about right. it last week. It was Zach, you and I talked about the, the people that only buy these consoles for the Call of Duties and the sports games, or maybe even less. The Xbox Series S makes so much sense. From a money standpoint, it's just it's just a stupid good deal, Absolutely. and I've been saying this for weeks. I said it last week, the week before. Xbox doesn't care if you buy the Xbox Series X or the Xbox Series S; they want you in that Game Pass ecosystem. That is what they're game. trying to sell, and they're they're almost not even playing the same game. And this, to me, is proof positive of that very point. They're thinking long term. Mm-hmm. Because as much as you hate it, Zach, and you too, CB, digital is going to be the wave of the future. Nope. And <laughs> it is. I mean, there's, there, it's, you can't argue that it's not going to be. Can you? 
I mean, the fact that, uh, are like maybe, maybe a couple generations, but I still don't think this is going to be the last generation with digital, uh, digital and physical. I mean, I, I, mean, I do think it's a lot further out than people think. No, I, I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow. I'm not even going to say it's going to happen this generation. I'm just saying it's, it's going to happen someday. Right. I think There's no way it's not going to happen. You will always be able to buy a physical disc somewhere, though. If, if limited run has to do it. You, you know, mean whatever. like you can buy a physical PC version somewhere right now? No, I'm saying even you can, you can get House of Cards on Blu-ray, you know? Like, there will always be a physical outlet for the collectors. I mean, even Amazon, they do a lot of print-on-demand stuff. Right. For Blu-rays. Sure. And, so. Boy, it makes you wonder what else yeah. they've got cooking um, i don't know what else could you have left <sighs> another nintendo. major studio acquisition or <laughs> yeah like, well no like putting game pass on nintendo i mean yeah that would be huge i mean the fact that that rumor has been kicking out f- around for a long time it sure kind of makes that seem like more of a r- realization doesn't it yeah realistic possibility but but again like it's like we said a few minutes ago Nobody had any clue that this sale was happening. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, boop, hey, guess what? We bought we bought a thing. I mean, I wouldn't even assume they were on the market. No. Yeah. But <clears throat> the the one thing that really does make me wonder though is seven and a half billion dollars in cash. Mm-hmm. How deep is that war chest? I, I think they're they're okay. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> sure they're just fine. I mean that that's still a that's not a that is not a small chunk of change. No, I know, Todd, Todd remember... Howard's about to buy an archipelago. <laughs> he's he's literally going to build Skyrim. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like for real. Ah, oh, that is that is really fun news. Uh really fun news. But I think it would behoove us to uh mention for sure the Sony PS5 showcase as well. Uh that was it, it's so weird that that's like the Eh, that's that's the news. <laughs> it's there. Well, it hel- it it helps that it was a few days ago, but uh, ultimately it is just like pricing compared to. I mean this this is the expected course of the industry. Purchasing Zenimax is like a what right type right. of development. Who is left by the way to buy? I, I don't know. Ah, so like <laughs> two. I mean anything. Can we else revive if- Visceral. They got the money. Can they? They can make that happen, can't they? Just res- resurrect them. Go- oh man. I know. I'm sorry. I know everyone online is talking about this, but Obsidian and uh, Bethesda under one roof opens up a lot of exciting possibilities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, New Vegas two. Sure, that is one of them. Yeah, absolutely. That would be pretty cool. I mean, that, uh, Xbox is now Xbox went from a company with no RPGs to having three dedicated RPG studios. Mm-hmm. Um, g- since oh, well, I know that, but we're also talking about the PS5 showcase. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> That thing. I I will say this showcase actually made me mad. Made you mad? It yeah. was incredible. No, I no, thought no, it was great. There's there's one there's one piece of news out of it that made me really mad. Are you you're upset that they're making a new Five Nights at Freddy's? No. Um, you're you're mad that uh, Spider Man and Horizon Zero Dawn are going to be on PS4. No, I mean, whatevs. Yeah. Uh, the fact that Final Fantasy that. 16 is going to be a PS5 exclusive. Remember when we thought that that was the big news of the week? Yeah. We're like, man, nothing will top that exclusivity move in the ever. <laughs> but it Microsoft's like hold my beer. <laughs> yeah. But but again, Microsoft has some bargaining power now. So you think that's uh, not a done deal? I Can we just talk about Square Enix? They're kind of dirtbags with this, aren't they? Yeah. Dating all the way back to Rise of the Tomb Raider being a Xbox 1 and and uh, 360 exclusive. So they're playing both sides. And then, yeah, but putting Spider Man only in the you know PS4 version of Avengers, which is an unbelievably scummy move that I feel like I need to call out at least once a week. <laughs> and now Final Fantasy 16 on PS5. That's kind of people keep blaming Sony and Microsoft, but there's there's a company at the center of these constant exclusivity deals. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> they're like an arms dealer that sells to both sides <laughs> of yeah, the war. I'm I'm Can't. really serious. Like this actually really pissed me off. It didn't make me like I. I guess I just associate Final Fantasy to PlayStation so much. I kind of do as well. Although we've had we have had on Xbox, but fifteen games like fifteen was such a great game, both consoles. Oh, yeah, right. And now you're gonna be like, hey, we know you guys like this game. 
we're going to make the next one only on one console, so bite me. I can, I can understand why you're mad, and Final Fantasy VII was a little less difficult to get mad at, just because it was so... I mean, it's, you know, PS1... It is a piece of PS1 nostalgia. But that's also coming to Xbox eventually, right? right? This this is this is coming to Xbox eventually as well, right? I thought it's a no. It's a PS5 PC exclusive, right? But they they said that when Rise of the Tomb Raider was announced as well. I know. And then a few months later, but you know they're like, oh, here's the twentieth anniversary. It's going to place it. You know, like I'm sure I would be surprised if you don't see Final Fantasy Sixteen on Xbox at some point. Well, um, since it's PC, I mean, I'm sure Microsoft will find a way to backdoor it in, but it's still. It still makes me mad. It just makes me really mad. All right, man. But what why you- does that make you mad? But Bethesda being exclusive to Xbox, that possibility no, doesn't make No, because I you said mad. during that conversation, I want everyone to be able to play these games. I hate exclusive things. Mm-hmm. I, I don't. I'm sorry. Like I, I, I understand their necessity. How about that? Yes, I understand it. But when you have, when, when you have a series that has moved away from the exclusivity thing, and then to immediately go back to it, that's yeah. asinine. I mean, I, I do, I hate when they announce a game and then it's made exclusive. Yeah. That's the right. worst. That happened with Deathloop. Yeah. I want to run through these other games pretty quickly because... Wait, uh, Final Fantasy 16 looks dope. It does. It does look good. It does. It looks incredible. Still mad. The idea, I am, I am obsessed and I keep thinking of this idea of the main character wanting to destroy the crystals because crystals are so they're so important in Final Fantasy. So I love his like a little Kylo Ren move of like destroy the past, kill it if you have to. Mm. Kind of situation. Doesn't that mean char- that character in that trailer reminds me of the box art for is it the Last Remnant? Which I was is saying, a game I haven't oh, yeah. played. Yeah, I but I totally that. recognized the face. He looked like I just remember that box art. It's me. And, it's being made by the MMO team, which I feel like you can tell by based on the way the game looks. Well, I mean, kind of Final Fantasy fifteen played like that well, kind well of this like, looks like it just plays like a straight up action game right i don't know it, it's dope and it looks like it i like takes... to re- return to uh you know like medieval yes look which yes. you know 15 which... was very very modern i haven't played 14 13 felt modern the 13 was sci-fi like you're talking yeah. AIs and stuff right 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 but i feel like it's just... and I, I know 12 was kind of medieval but this feels like traditional fairy tale medieval which yes. we haven't had since nine yep so it's very excited, but anyway, like I was saying, this new, this news happened like the night our ep- our last episode revealed. Like the, the, between this and the Xbox news dropping when we're actually recording the week before, uh, this is old news at this point. But I want to run through these titles anyway. Spider Man, Miles Morales. We got some new gameplay. Uh, we got a Harry Potter game called uh, Hogwarts Legacy coming so, in twenty twenty one. So excited for this! I actually want to. That play looks it. really good, doesn't it? I mean, it is it is everybody's dream for a Harry Potter game come true. Yeah. It, with, without Harry Potter. Because right, well, it takes I, place I like in the 1800s want, or whatever. I didn't want him in there anyway. No, no, no. I always fine. just wanted Bully Butt at Hogwarts, you know? Like go to <laughs> classes and stuff. Yeah. That's all I ever wanted. I, I'm really intrigued by how that works. You just create your own character. Oh, it looks yeah, really I, good. Yes. Uh, Resident Evil 8, I'm still confused by the naming of this game. Is it Resident Evil 8 Village, or is it just Resident Evil Village, or is it Village? It's eight I think it's Resident Evil 8 Village. It's just, but, but you can stylize it on the box, box by putting the Roman numeral. It, right. They did the same thing with Biohazard. They did, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I need to play that campaign. <laughs> it's exactly what I wanted in another Black Ops story. It just oh, I don't want to pay sixty or seventy dollars right. for a four hour campaign though. Right. I know. I, I wish Redbox still did game rentals because it does look sick, but yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shell out sixty or perhaps seventy. You know, we could just buy like it. a physical copy of it, just pass it around between the three of us. We could. Like, <laughs> there you go. That's something. Uh Death Loop, we saw some more on that. Uh Special edition of Devil May Cry 5, which is going to be available digitally at launch. Come on, Zach. I know you want to say it. <laughs> Who brought marshmallows? Because I'm bringing the fire. A <laughs> uh, new Oddworld game called Oddworld Soulstorm. A Five Nights at Freddy's game called Security Breach. The uh, um, remaster of Demon Souls, which will be available is, at launch. That is a remake that is costing you $70. Just want to point $70 that out. $70 People for a remake. And people were upset that Crash Team Racing was only one game at 40. 
and or or you know it's just the, the I think Sony has earned the Nintendo bump, man. Yeah. Clearly, like the press is not talking about this, which is something that if I feel like if they remade just the first Gears of War for seventy dollars, you would be hearing about it. Yeah. But it's okay. No because yes. nobody's complaining about it. I have not seen a no. single person complain about it on Twitter or or any podcast or anything. Everyone's just like, oh yeah, seventy dollars. Only seen people joyfully pre ordering it. Yep, exactly. And they closed the show with a, a teaser for the new God of War game. I assume it'll be called Ragnarok. Uh, all I had to hear was that music, and I was and I was kind of pumped. And then we got the prices for the PS5, which again is old news for you guys now. But the optical uh, version will be four ninety nine, and the digital version will be three ninety nine. Um, what do you guys think of that pricing? We were wrong, Scott. We were wrong. I'm pleasantly surprised. Yes, I'm happy I, to be wrong. I have a feeling that was a last minute change. I agree 100%. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's no question. Yeah. Once that, they saw that Series S price point, they were like, we got to figure something out now. It feels like they so just the, scrolled the ticker. They're like, just, <laughs> yeah. just move both of them down one. Absolutely. So the question I have, because the digital version of the PS5 is $100 more than the Series S. Is that because it is not a lesser version of the of the optical ver- optical PS5? It just does not have that disk drive? Am I yeah. understanding that correctly? It is a, it's the same console. Yeah. Just, just digital only. Right. So you're paying $100 for disk drive, which I will happily do for sure. You know what? Honestly. Spoiler alert. Who cares about the price? God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> That's all you had That's to hear. I, I forgot how okay. much you love that I, game. I adore that game so much. Yeah. Let me tell you guys. Ever since we started this podcast, I've been such a more positive human being in my life. But I actually, I felt like a, such a cynic again this week because with Miles Morales, everyone's freaking out, and I was like, "Yes, it looks like Spider Man." Right. That yeah, that is exciting. You know, My, Miles is a character that is very dear to me. I've read every single one of his issues ever mm-hmm. uh, since they started coming out. Like that is a character. That is close to my heart. But however, the game just looks like Spider-Man. And then people freaking out about God of War. I'm like, it was a logo. Don't. <laughs> we, we already knew this game was in development. Why are we excited? You saw how oh, everybody was... flipped out over Elder Scrolls 6. And that was... I, I also did not... That was just pretty, pretty landscape and title. I guess I just... I don't understand the excitement at non-announcements. It's just it's fun same, to be excited about it, but man. It's I think it's more or less the the excitement that like we know that it's in the works, but to see that they've actually like like oh like we're we're actually officially like we're moving. Cause how many games have we no, seen that you. just hit like, oh it's rumored and vaporware. There's no like way that s- game's coming out in twenty twenty one. No. Oh absolutely not. Not at all. No. I would actually prefer it more if we heard about this stuff like three or four months before launch, like Todd Howard did with Fallout 4. Uh, I, I am I am of the opposite mind. I wish they would do it like movies where they're just like, yeah, we got God of War 2 is coming in 2022. Like, But they announced that in like 2018. 2022. I'm a little bit 2023. For God of War? Yeah. Nah, no. five, five years, no way. No. No way. We are. Ooh, I smell a bet. Steak, steak dinner bet. <laughs> I already got one in. Actually, you know what? Yeah, you true. know what, Zach? Yeah. I will bet you, and the the winner gets to slap Scott in the face. No, no, no! Oh, Wait a minute! <laughs> yeah, I like that a lot. <laughs> that's perfect. I am not part of this slap bet. Yes, you are. Who's our slap bet commissioner? I need a ruling on this one. I'm uh, not subjecting myself to a free slap from either uh, of you. I'll bet you. I'll bet you comes out in 2022, and uh, I'll bet. I'll bet you the copy of the game. Okay. Ooh. I will. I will say. Q1 2023. I'm going to say Q2 2022. Is this like prices right? Like it's whoever close. No, no, no. I mean, you just, you, either of you get the year. Okay. Yeah. But if you get the, if you, let's do that. Either of you get the year, but if you get the quarter right as well, then the winner also gets like the special edition version of it. That's, oof, that really kicked it up a notch. I'm yeah. just saying. That'd be a, that'd be a pretty. <laughs> I'm going to laugh when they announce the date and it's going to be like holiday 2022. And then, like, two weeks before, they're, like, delayed to 2023. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> right, right. that really has to be the key is, is like, 
Does that mean when it's announced or when it's actually oh, released? Oh, no, it's because release. You, oh, yeah. Corey, Corey, don't let me down. I'm <laughs> from first name basis, Corey Barlog, of course. Well, speaking of things that uh, piss off Zach. <laughs> okay. We are getting a uh, new Splinter Cell game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's you want to talk on. about this? I Zach? saw that and I immediately like just <laughs> thought of Zach and I'm like, mm, mm, that's got to hurt. Uh, yeah. I believe I said some things I cannot repeat on this podcast uh, you did. at this announcement. At this point, it feels like they have contempt for the Splinter Cell fan base. <laughs> like it's, it, it feels mean spirited at this point. Yeah, it's been too long since there's been a well, proper Splinter Cell game. And you know how much people are clamoring for it. You yep. know, and you, you said the excitement with Michael Ironside coming back to the Ghost Recon DLC. You see how upset people are about this wacko version that's in Rainbow Six. So you're like, all right, VR. And you know what the most annoying part is? The Splinter Cell VR game sounds awesome. Yeah. yeah. But so not, it's hard to be pissed off, but... Not VR. like this. Yep. Not like this. This. Actually, every one of the Oculus games sounds awesome. I need an Oculus Quest 2 now. I, I, I'll I, say it, right? I am more excited for the Oculus Quest 2 than I am for the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5 right now. I think that, and for 300 bucks, man. That, that's... Yes, the, the price point, the, the exclusive games, see how that helps? Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I, I might, I'll, I'll you know, start a, a Joe, a Joe, John Doe. Facebook account to get this Oculus oh. Quest going. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you are you don't have Facebook. I see what you're saying. Uh, also, a Ubisoft Assassin's Creed game mm. in VR. Can you imagine <laughs> doing those uh, Leap of Faiths in VR? I'm, <laughs> those are just... I'm ready. Those are two two properties. Perfect for VR. However, you owe, you owe the Splinter Cell fan base a real Splinter Cell before you do this. Yeah, and how many Assassin's Creed games have come out since the last Splinter Cell game, it's been that hurts. It's been a few. That it's really, that really few. hurts. Uh, also, there's going to be a Mist game in VR. Also, and, sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's a great game for VR. If it, especially if it's as difficult as the original Mist games, which I was terrible at. But if you, if you guys have ever played The Room, imagine The Room, but like five or six times harder. And yeah, that's that's what I how I remember missed. Sorry. But doing that in VR sounds awesome. Sorry, every time you say room, I think of a movie. <laughs> yeah. You're tearing me apart, Lisa. <laughs> oh hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Um Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy Edge, Jurassic World Aftermath, Medal of Honor, Above and Beyond. Looks so uh, good. Oh my god. good. Oh man. Population one, the climb two, which I assume Chris isn't excited about. Yeah. Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sister and Pistol Whip 2089. I am ready for more Pistol Whip, even though I have come nowhere near exhausting the first game. But uh, I need to buy that on PSVR. That is a workout. And I'm all excited. That Jurassic for that. World game looks really fun. Yeah. I didn't I actually miss the trailer for that one. Is it a I shooter just, or what is it? I'm not 100% sure what it is entirely <laughs> because, well, you catch like little bits of the game and like I can't tell if it's like an action game or a shooter. Right. But that's kinda that's kinda how I feel about the, the Tales from the Galaxy's Edge. Like I'm excited for it, but I'm not totally sure if it's is this just a shooter or yeah, I mean like, like you're not gonna buy it if you have not, if you have a quest. I mean Yeah, I mean of course. If that Vader Immortal will be then yeah. You probably time. bought that like Star Wars Connect dancing game just just on principle, right? Right, just to ha- I gotta have them all, man. Yeah. I am on a quest to have every Star Wars game. Good luck. <laughs> There's yeah, Thank there's you. there's some expensive ones, <laughs> um, but but the uh, the Jurassic World game looked a little like uh like you do have guns, but it also kind of looks like almost like Alien Isolation where you're hiding from raptors and stuff. Yeah, oh, and that's why yes. I said like I can't really consider it a first person shooter because it seems yeah. like a survival action game that just happens to have guns. Yeah, CB was real. already sold on it. You didn't have to throw in the Alien Isolation angle. I, I just like yay. <laughs> I kind of, oh. kind of did like the. There's like that scene where she's like, uh, "You're like closing the door on the raptor's face or whatever." Maybe think Alien Isolation. I haven't played that game. Oh, but. Can I get Alien Isolation on my quest? Because then I would just never leave. I'm surprised that it's not a thing. I know. I would. I would never take that headset off. I'd be like, yes, all the time. 
Is it on the Nostromo? <laughs> uh, or just a spaceship? The, the DLC is. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But, but the one, the ship that you start on is very reminiscent of the Nostromo. Yeah, it's, it's the same. the Sevastopol. Architecture. CB, I'm, I'm sorry that one of your heroes, the guy who designed the Nostromo, died today. Yeah, sad. Uh, last thing I would just want to mention quickly, four new games coming to Nintendo Online, which I feel like we haven't got much new in there in a while, so this is cool. Diddy Kong 2, Diddy Kong's Quest. I'm sorry, Donkey Kong 2, Diddy Kong's Quest. Mario Super Picross and the Peacekeepers, all as Super Nintendo games, and then Scat on the NES. The worst titled NES game. Did, did they know no, what that, that acronym stood for back then? At that point, no. Yes. It, was, it did not mean that. It actually stands for Special Cybernetic Attack Team. I feel like this is a real they knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Hey, that, uh, that foreclosure game looks really cool. If you wanna, if anyone wants to look it up, it does look very cool. It's cyberpunk, kind of so shady. It's it looks cool. Comic book style, a little bit. Yeah. Shooter, looks very good. Uh, Amnesia coming to console. I might actually play one of those games. Maybe. I tried one on yeah. PC, and I just, I just don't like just running away from stuff all the time. Running and hiding. Oh, I yeah. Like then you can't. Anyway. I mean, in Amnesia, you can't even look at the monsters either because you go insane. So you just have to stare at a wall for right. several minutes while you wait for the monster to pass you. Which is always fun. You would feel like you're wasting your time fun. big time, but you know, <laughs> I know how you feel. Well, that was quite a news roundup there. Let's go hey, ahead and... Honestly, shorter than I thought. Yeah, I really thought we were going to go at least an hour talking about that, but uh, we, we kept it uh, succinct to a point, I guess. Uh, Patreon, let's talk about that really quick. As I mentioned earlier, we do have a Patreon where we've got extra bonus episodes, and uh, since we are independently funded and pay for all these services on our own, um, we ask for help from you guys. And uh, we contribute back to you, give back to you by giving you some bonus content. Uh, CB, what is new on the horizon in terms of episodes? Well, most recently, we still have our drunken game trivia, versus, which is me versus Jordan Derringer High. Uh, mm -hmm. And our Ghosts of Tsushima episode with Zach and Mr. Nate Wilcox and Spencer. Uh, as far as upcoming, we have our Break the Seal episode where Scott plays some Tony Hawk. Yeah, still got to play the new one, but... Uh, it's really spicy. Um, yeah. And then uh, we're also doing one on racing games. Burnout, yes. uh, Blur, Split Second. Should be interesting. <sighs> Split uh, Second. Spoiler alert, Christina is loving all three of those games, like way more than I expected her to. She actually bought the copy that I picked up from me because she liked it that much and wanted to own it. Of which one? Of uh, s split second, no blur. Sorry, blur. Okay, yeah, yeah. Adult Mario Kart. Mm -hmm. And I actually, uh, she came over to pick up my console because she didn't have one, and so I was showing her how to play split second, and she was digging. She was watching me and getting excited watching me play that first airport level. And dude, I forgot how fun that game is. Yeah, it's it's exceptional. It looks there like a last gen game, but it is fun. It is so much fun to play. Ever told you my weird blur story? No. I, I had a, I worked with somebody who every week, and this is until like 2018 in Chicago, every Thursday, they would get a bunch of friends together and play blur. That's random. Is that not the random, most random thing you've ever heard? I mean, it, it's, it's random, but I mean, people did it with Mario Kart now and nobody bats an eye. Right, but that's such a huge franchise. Blur is a game that came out and bombed. Right. Like, so, so that's such a weird thing for them to latch on to. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you'd like to hear us talk about those racing games or uh, old school Tony Hawk mixed with new Tony Hawk, uh, those episodes will be available by the end of the month, as well as our entire back catalog of Break the Seal, games that aren't for us, legacy episodes, uh, whatever you like there. Uh, and if you're interested, head over to patreon.com forward slash the go cast. Uh, three bucks a month gets you one extra episode. Five bucks a month gets you two. And then there's tiers above that as well, where you get discounts on our on our store and uh, all kinds of good stuff. So be sure to check that out. We're going to now move into the games we've actually been playing. All right, Zach, I didn't release your work this week. So yes. what games are coming on the horizon? You did, you did not delete everything. Yeah. Uh, Vanilla Ware's new game, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, comes to PS4 September 22nd. It's a terrible name for a developer, by the way. 
Vanillaware? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like it stands out. They made the uh, demon's me, it, crown. I I know, but it just that's it just sounds like a I hear vanilla wear, I think shovelware or mm. like a regular old version, not Fair. the best version of something. That's just where my mind goes. Anyway. Fair enough. This is like a sci fi version of Odin Sphere to me. Okay. Uh and then Unrailed is a little train builder uh puzzle looking party game coming to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC September twenty third. Going under is a roguelike where you play an intern at a tech startup, and then all of your coworkers turn into zombies. Let's go to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC September 24th. Little Big Workshop comes to Xbox One September 24th. Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, Complete Edition, coming to Switch and PC September 24th. Unbelievably, Serious Sam 4 is coming to Stadia and PC. <laughs> you always put one in there, and it cracks me up. Well, that's a, I mean, that's, that feels like a weirdly kind of big game for Stadia. Yeah. Um, and I think that's an ex- like a, a exclusive from consoles kind of thing. Uh, September 24th, Tears of Avia is a RPG coming to Xbox One and PC September 24th. Tennis World Tour 2 coming at PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC September 24th. Remember when Topspin was out and good? Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm very excited for Mafia Definitive Edition coming to PS4, Xbox One, Stadia, and PC. September 25th, uh, pirate or you know, trade route simulator Port Royale 4. You make your trade routes via ships on PS4, Xbox One, PC, September 24th. And then Troll Hunters, Defenders of Arcadia, based on the hit Netflix animated series uh, from Guillermo del Toro, coming to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC, September 25th. It's kind of a big week. Yeah. A lot of games, but uh, nothing, not much that stands out. Mafia is probably the easy answer because I've never played Mafia, and uh, I've heard that the remaster just looks really great. It so is I'm a huge there. step up, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm very excited about Mafia Definitive Edition. I, uh, that first game was tremendous. Might be picking that one up too. Clean sweep for Mafia. Yep. Uh, Scott, I don't even know why Super Mario 3D All Stars on the Switch. This feels like a pretty easy conversation to have. Oh, oh, man, I could not wait to pick this up. CB, I thought you played this. Did you not play it? I picked it up, but uh, due to some family stuff, right. I wasn't able to play it over the weekend. Well, here's okay. the thing, though. You have played it. Yeah, I have. <laughs> well, except Galaxy. I've actually never played Galaxy, oh, which is why I bought it. for a treat. Yeah. I've actually played all three on this one, and I did not remember galaxy the first galaxy looking this good i know it's not up res or whatever but that is a sharp looking game ah uh, it's just it's so much fun jumping back into all three of these games i especially i started with mario 64 as you do just because we've, we've all played that game to death right i've got those first couple levels like memorized for even the you know all six stars and trying to figure out the way to get 100 coins and i've done that for the t- first two worlds just maxed them out just because it's fun I get to, you know, uh, satisfy that completionist checklist mentality in my brain. It's just great. Uh, it controls well. The camera still sucks. Perfect. I, I, I just don't understand why that camera can't spin around sometimes. Well, they, I mean, they would have had to do work on the, on the port for that. Well, no, but I'm even talking about like the original game. I've never, is it just, was it just hardware limitations that they couldn't get the camera to spin all the way around or? Wasn't it like the first 3D camera Yeah, game? I know that's fair, but just, man. It just would have been so nice. Sometimes I'm, I feel like I'm fighting with the camera in right. that they, game more than I need to. They figured it out by Ocarina. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so that's a, no problems with uh, 64, although everybody is saying that it um, it doesn't look any better. I, I, I remember 64 games. This game does not look like what it looked like when I played it on my CRT as a kid. <laughs> so there is there is that. It looks pretty good. It doesn't look what? super polished, but... You did recently play 64 with me. Did we play 64? Yeah. It didn't, it didn't look this good. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it's, it, it doesn't look as good as Galaxy. You know what I mean? It's, it doesn't have that fresh coat of paint, but it just feels crisper and the, and the edges seem uh, not quite as jagged. I, again, people are saying it's the, it's the DS version or whatever, which I never played. So I, I thought it was specifically it. not the DS version. That's, somebody told me that, so I no. don't know. I thought they confirmed it was not, but I could be wrong. Happy to be wrong. It it looks fine, and I feel like I'm I'm fine with it being the way it is. It 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 plays how I remember, 
and I'm not frustrated with it. The controls are are great. Um, there's something super satisfying about doing that trigger jump to jump forward where he jumps like super far, and I'm remembering some of that muscle memory is coming back to hit certain jumps and everything. Uh, what's the second one? Sunshine. If you guys remember, we did a we did a games that aren't for us on Sunshine recently. I think it was games that aren't for us, or was it retro CB? I can't remember. But I trashed that game on Patreon because I just it was basically unplayable for me. Didn't yeah. have nearly the issues I did playing it on the Switch that I did on uh, on GameCube. It looks awful on GameCube, but they still did not fix the inverted controls. So you still up is up, down is down. So aiming your little water blaster, which is a heavy component of this game, is not inverted. And there's not an option to invert it that I've been able to find. Because again, they would have to do work on the port. Right. You really just don't want to like this game. Uh, it's, just, it's just funny to me because if this were any other company, people would be just reaming these, you know, this company for the lack of yeah. effort. But Nintendo, of course, gets an absolute pass. Now, I'm, saying, a- I'm saying this fully. Like I'm an open hypocrite. I will buy Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Do not get me wrong. Mm-hmm. It's just, if any, in, the, in this age of you know, remasters, it does look like it just looks so desperately like we need to get our quarterly numbers up quick. Especially the timing of it. Right. Like it's, yeah. Yeah. That's all. Uh, the, the other thing I wanted to mention about it, because we've all, most of us have played all these games, but Galaxy, I was very curious about how they were going to handle the waggle controls in that game. Uh, because if you remember, to jump from, from you know, planet to planet, you get in that little star and you have to shake the controller. Right, but to make him go, you could just make that a. Do they just make it a button press? Because that seems like it the is a button. Things. But they've also made it that you can actually tap it on the screen, which isn't convenient. Even on a light, it's still quite a reach. You have to. Yeah. You can't do it and keep your finger on the stick. So um, the Y button also works for that. So I'm not having any issues. How do you collect those little uh, galaxy bits? Because you used to have to use the pointer. Well, you you can do that. You can draw on the screen and do that, or like if you want to shoot those. Remember, sometimes there's like coins buried in the ground that you get if you shoot them and it uncovers coins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like especially during boss battles and stuff, you can do that, but you actually have to physically tap on it on the screen. Oh, so it's kind of which, that's a little bit of an inelegant answer. Yeah, it's not it's not perfect, but uh, the game is just. I'm having trouble with the, um, you know, the blue stars where you have to like kind of the, the stretchy ones. You have to pull and release. Yes. You remember those? Yes. Those you have to do on the touchscreen. That's so, so can you can you play this game docked then? I guess not. Well you can play it docked because you can play docked with the, the Joy Cons detached. But then how do you do the, the touching the screen stuff you're talking about? Well if you're doing it detached, then you just use it like a Wii Wii remote. Then you're doing everything oh. just like you played it on the Wii. So but you so you but you, He's, but you wouldn't be able to use like a uh like a gamepad or like the docking thing for the joy cons probably okay you you've are you playing this on your light i am or? playing it on my light yeah so i don't have the option to play it with it that is the one thing that sucks about the light is you don't have that option but i would still take the light right it's just so much more comfortable but i am having a blast i'm probably like i'm over 20 stars in in the first one um probably about 10 stars in sunshine and maybe six or seven in uh in Galaxy. One thing that I did not remember because it's been, I only played through Galaxy once. I forgot how good that music is in that game. Oh, yeah. And it's just really great. And all the soundtracks are included, by the way, which is which is kind of weird because I've never thought, like, where am I going to listen to some good video game music? I'm going to turn on my Switch. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to carry my Switch around. It, it's just, it's kind of weird, but it's there if you want to, if you want to have that. And uh, I'm having an absolute blast. It's all I want to that and undermine is all I want to be playing. Would it, would you admit though the least they could have done for sixty dollars is invert a freaking camera? Oh, totally. Yeah. Like inverting is you know me it's it's huge. I mean, that uh, it just kind of does feel like the bare minimum. Mm-hmm. And they didn't even do that. Yeah, and but, I I'm fully with you, but I'm still not mad at I'm still not mad at sixty bucks. I'm looking at it as twenty bucks for each to have the convenience. Right. Um, but. Are you like happily Galaxy going to, Two to be on there? Yeah. Are you going to happily pay sixty dollars for Super Mario Three D All Stars when it's re released next year with Galaxy Two? Boy, that's I bet, interesting. I bet you will. See, I bought it digitally, so okay. I would be a little frustrated by that because you know that 
that uh, physical copies of Nintendo games, their resale value is much better than other platforms. And so I wouldn't be able to trade in my digital copy of that. Now, if they offered me like an extra $20 to get Galaxy 2 as well, or maybe 40 I don't know. Yeah, I was 30. Saying, so Galaxy is so good, I would pay 40 I would just yeah. pay $40 for Galaxy 2. Galaxy 2 is so good, but I feel like that one needs the needs the joystick the, the the waggle a little bit more i could be remembering that wrong yeah i don't really remember. i feel like the i feel like the waggle played a key part in some of those harder levels towards the end i'm trying to remember because in my memory they downplayed it okay but i don't and know i think those are my my favorite portions of this game or when they strip you of the or no this is uh, sunshine but when they strip you of the flood the yeah. the thing that and it's just like a pure platforming Mario game, which is like a crazy platforming level, those are my favorite parts of that game because they are tough. It's almost like Flood makes Mario worse. Yeah, that it's not great, but the, but some but, of the other platforming is really great in that game. Um, I just want to chime in real quick on one thing because I know you are a digital person. Um, you paid sixty dollars for this, correct? Mm-hmm. You made a mistake. Why? Could have gone to Walmart and bought it for forty eight. Oh, I got it for forty eight as well. I have a physical copy as well. Okay, we actually. Um, Why? I'm keeping it sealed. It's oh, rare. Okay. I, it will be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be. Um, I, I was just saying because I know our listeners are out there, and I keep forgetting that Walmart actually sells new games for like ten dollars off. Well, actually, Amazon did as well. I paid sixty for it on Amazon, and then when Walmart released their price. Uh, they actually gave us a credit on on the Amazon order, so that was good. Best Buy did not. Nope. Best really? Buy did not. Yeah. Uh-oh. Best Buy's in trouble. Yeah. So Super Mario 3D All Stars. If you like these games and you just want to play them, it, it it's so nice. I actually bring my Switch to work, so when I get my lunch, I can just bust open my Switch and knock out a couple stars in you know twenty minutes. It's yeah, it's, it's awesome. great. It's it's I, so nice to be able to do that. The game I'm about to talk about, I wish I could do, kind of wish I had a Switch. Yeah? Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. You're playing Other Side, which uh, has been out for a little while, right? Or is yeah. it brand new? Uh, it, came, it came out on Switch this month, um, but it came out on PS4 and Xbox One in July. Okay. Um, and the publisher, publisher Focus Home Interactive, sent me a code. Uh, sort of out of the blue, but I'll take it. All right. Uh, so what is it? Because it's really hard to tell from that trailer. Well, yeah. I mean, first of all, if you watch the trailer, the first thing you're going to notice is how striking the look is. It is. It does look good. And, uh, I mean, it's like all monochromatic, like uh, black and white, except for these just these sharp pieces of red that are all over the place. Okay. Uh, like, you know, the character's kind of wearing like a red scarf or something. It's just really, it's just really striking visually. Okay. Um. Well, it is a tactics roguelike. So you oh, think, that's right. Because you were telling me, yeah, it's a roguelike. So I'd be interested, but it's tactics, which right. is more up your speed. And a little bit of a, it's kind of a more simplified tactics game. It's not as as deep cut or as totally uh, hard as XCOM. Mm-hmm. But that's fine, right? Because if it was, it would make the roguelike portion frustrating instead of interesting. Absolutely. Uh, so, like, right off the bat, there's only three classes. There is uh, the Blade Master, the Shield Bearer, and the Soul Slinger, which is uh, sword, shield, and uh, guns, respectively. Mm. Um, and your and your goal is you get these little instances of, you know, quick little tactics gameplay uh, where you fight demons or plague doctors, and your, your goal is to, you know, murder them until you can... Uh, survive long enough to get to the boss, and you fight the boss, and the boss will kill you right away. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then you'll, but then you'll learn about the boss, and then uh, you, you you kick back to day one and have to do it all over again. So is it more about learning the boss and doing that over and over again, as opposed to like getting more money and building up your stats and all that? Or right, so the structure of the game is uh, each boss has seven days associated with them, mm-hmm. uh, and basically your goal for the days are. You know, upgrade your upgrade your uh, daughters. They're called your characters. Everyone, everyone's a female in this game, uh, and you know you want to murder demons to upgrade your stats or level them up. And every time you level up, every significant level up, like level two or level five, level ten, you have to choose between two different skills to give your daughter. Okay. 
uh, which is which is pretty nice little you know push and pull of like oh you know this this soul slinger has uh, an AOE attack, but this soul slinger can boost the speed of another character or whatever, and so it's just kind of a nice little uh, push and pull. And then each day, every character can only be in one combat engagement, so you have to you have to kind of be strategic about how you use your your daughters uh, throughout the week. Sounds interesting. Are you digging it? Yeah, man, uh, digging in a lot. Uh, the the two things that kind of different that set it apart is it's got a little timeline system. Uh, so every every character has a certain amount of initiative, but you you can do so many things to affect the initiative, right? So you can uh, like the shield bearer can knock their shield into the enemy, and it'll put them back. There's a there's a timeline at the bottom of the screen, and it goes from zero to one hundred, and everybody has a number, right? So like. You know, the enemy might have 17, so in 17 seconds or whatever, they get their turn. Right. But if you can get to them on your turn, you can, like, shield bash them, and then, like, now they're, you know, 47 seconds away from their turn. So you push and them that, up the timeline a little bit. Right, and that might open up one of your other daughters who, you know, was in between there on the timeline to finish them off or something. Um, and then if you... But if you have 100 um, action points every turn, if you go below 50, it pushes you to 100. But if you keep it above 50, it only pushes it. You can go sooner, basically. So it's a little bit of, do I want this? This daughter's going to be out of the game for a lot longer if I use up all my skills. Or do I want to place them a little bit earlier on the timeline? It's just a lot of little management decisions happening there. And then the other aspect is uh, you, your characters are supposed to die. So it's got permadeath. Um, but the only way to heal your characters is to sacrifice one of the other ones to them. Wow, I don't think I've played a game that does that. That's interesting. It's pretty damn cutthroat, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. It 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 hurts sometimes because the the kicker is you can only heal them with another daughter of the same level. Oh, so you can't just like wipe out your lower level ones, right? So you have to you have to sacrifice the ones that are actually meaningful. So you're keeping the ones that that you've gotten like that perfect build that you like. Yeah, they, uh, I unlocked a because it's a roguelike. You can unlock new, uh, different ways like start or whatever. Like there's a, there's a currency that carries over, and you can spend it to give yourself perks at the beginning of a run. Uh, which I think you can do that rogue legacy and stuff, right? Mm, uh, I mean, you have well, rogue legacy. Your perks are built into your character, but a lot of them are are goofy. Like, oh, this character's colorblind, right? Or this character walks on the ceiling, so sometimes it just makes the experience different more than hurts or hinders you, although some of them do hurt you. Okay, well this has like, you can resurrect a daughter, but it'll cost you 50 of the currency, or you know, or you can give all your daughters an extra 15% health for 25 of the currency. It's just got like a bunch of cool different things. Mm -hmm. You can even skip to the second boss's week uh, for like 100 currency, which is cool. Oh, okay. But it's, uh, I mean, it's just like you're constantly pushing and pulling and weighing your options, and it makes every combat encounter stressful because if an enemy even hits you once, you know, that could be catastrophic to a run. Right. And then so many of your skills, because this game is like all about, you know, sacrificing these, these daughters, is like, oh, you'll interrupt an enemy's attack on, an, on one of your other, you know, party members, but... It's going to cost you five percent of your health to do this attack, and then you then you have to watch as this daughter actually slits her wrist to to, to do the spell. Holy cow! Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. It's pretty. Weak. This whole game, by the way, is like so my aesthetic. Uh, it feels like very bloodborne the way the characters speak, almost like poetically, and they're just like, even the loading screens are just saying stuff like, you know, send me your daughters. They taste delicious. Holy cow. Uh, it's it's just like a macabre world. It's so freaking cool. Like the first week is all the boss is a, a plague doctor. So all the enemies have like plague masks and stuff like that. It's really cool. Then you get to the second weekend. It's like a, a priest. So all the characters have like Bibles and stuff. It's it has such a wicked awesome aesthetic. That sounds really cool. Now, I know you've not been a big fan of rogues in the past, but this sounds a bit more up your speed in terms of the tactics aspect. Are you sensing the itch that I get with the, the roguelikes that I like? Or is uh, this... Yeah, I mean, more more than I ever have with the roguelike. Um, I'm liking it a lot. The aesthetic really does carry it for me. The, the daughter system and 
it's funny how quickly I went from, oh my God, I can't, I can't sacrifice, you know, uh, harmony, you know, you know, one of my daughters, cause she's been through all this, but then now that I'm playing, I'm like, well, if I kill her now, I can, you know, have more health for the boss fight. So adios, <laughs> harmony. Like it's, it's funny how quickly that transformation's happened. So do you get attached to these characters? Like you, like from a narrative aspect or is it just like, oh, this character has been with me for so long? <laughs> no, although there is more story in this game than I expected with this, this character called the mother who's trying to save the child. Uh, it's, it's good. And the child is like this infinite who is just murdering things. It's, yeah, it's, I was surprised. I'm surprised how much story is, but your individual, you know, combatants, the daughters don't actually have a uh, much narrative impact, but when you murder, when they kill somebody, it gives you a chance to get like a trait and the traits are substantial. Like, uh, there's one where if, you know, if this daughter has anybody next to them, they each get 40% more damage. Oh. Which is significant. So you really want to protect them and you get attached to their skill sets and stuff. And then when you have, when you're about to do your boss fight and, you know, you have two of these daughters who are maybe they're both, you know, down to a third of their health bar or whatever. And they both have these insane set of stacked skills, but you don't have one, you know, a daughter, another daughter high enough level to save them. It's, it's stress. It's stressful, man. And the boss fights are tense. You really have to pay attention to, to their, you know, the way they operate because because some enemies will be like they attack the nearest uh, daughter but then another one will be like it attacks the nearest daughter with the lowest health and so you kind of learn how to kite them around ah it's interesting just, kiting something in a turn-based tactics game i've never i mean i don't play them as much as you probably but yeah i mean it's got a lot of systems i'm not i don't think i've ever played a game where part of the core c- combat loop is losing your own health hmm. you know like and there's no re- there's no easy way to recover it so yeah man i'm really into it i think i'm going to keep playing it which is unheard of for me in a roguelike i uh, agreed but the the tactics angle i think is helping it i do i feel like the runs are a little long but i'm starting to get the first boss down to where i'm just you know just i'll just start his week and then confront him on the first day even sorry nice. we're getting there it's yeah it's great man that is other side you're playing on PS4 and to be clear other side is spelled with a C instead of an S right like a like a crime and then right. the logo highlights the word her which i thought was a cute little touch uh but yeah it's it's absolutely great so thanks folks home for the code um i don't know man it's weird when you're the only person who's played a game so you just feel like you're monologuing yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying like but it's it's really good guys i would i would recommend it if you like roguelikes or tactics games for sure very cool C- CB's been playing Crisis Remastered? Yeah, I did not know yeah. this. <laughs> wow, I, I just installed this game. Uh, I, this this makes me really happy because this is actually a game I've wanted to play for a very long time. Well, okay. the, the joke is over now, right? You know, can Crisis run this? Turns out even the Switch can. Yep. And see, that's the thing is when this game first came out, I couldn't play it. My PC was awful. Same. Which Which stopped me from playing Crisis 2 or 3. I played the crap out of two and three. I did too. Two, two is great. Three, not so much. I had a bow in the year of the bow, though. I thought that was that was three. I thought it was yeah. two that had the bow. Three had the bow. Okay. Um, this game plays really good, guys. Awesome! Can't wait to play it. I'm I'm absolutely loving this. I forgot how much I loved the Crisis series. Uh, between using like the cloak and the armor, uh, whereas like. I re- since you've played two and three, uh, I always remembered being like the only person with the suit. Mm-hmm. Right. I've forgotten one. There was multiple people with suits. Oh, really? I didn't know that. So because you, you, you the character profit in two and three. Is that right? No. In, in two and three, I believe you're profit in this one. Uh, I was just playing it a little bit ago. You, you have a different name, well, I guess not- but you're listening to profit. I guess it doesn't end well for you. At the end of Crisis <laughs> One, so um, yeah, the clean, clean uh, gunplay, and it's and I'm I'm playing it on medium, and it's not forgiving. Huh, that's um, great. There's there's been so many games that I've played where you're, you just you're a bullet sponge. This no, you you get hit in the wrong spot at the wrong time or get pinned down, you can die very very quickly. Even now, with your I- nano suit. You have to rely heavily on the nano suit to survive. Um, 
and and see i've i've been i've played so many games where you are a literal bullet sponge that i charged headlong into a battle in this and got promptly wrecked hmm now i've played two and three and those felt like very linear experiences but i have heard that the original crisis has got a bit more of an open world is that correct not so far okay so it's still a linear experience it is a linear experience but there's different ways to get from a to b okay different paths so i think um, don't developers refer to it as wide linear i guess yeah i, I mean i can see that because there's there's a part on a beach where the objective's off in the distance and there's a very wide path that you can take but you can definitely tell that there's a a wall over here and a wall over here but whether you want to go through like the valley or up here on this cliff side you can get there different ways so. i was al- i was always under the impression that it was like an open world island that's what i thought too i'm willing to bet it probably opens up okay i'm still f- i've probably had a good couple hours in this already yeah i'm not we're not calling you a liar i was just i feel like <laughs> now i feel like i was lied to but but again, because this is a completely new experience for me on an old game, like I'm very excited for it. I am um, excited that I looked up how long it is, and the average play session is ten hours. Yes, uh, this game looks really good too. Now that was going to be my question because I know that this was the game that everybody uses a measuring stick for the quality of their PC. Do you does it look as good on a console? as it was supposed to look on P- like like does it look good by today's standards or does it just look better than the original i could never tell you what the original looked like oh you did, okay that's right you said you're because never run when it. i load when i loaded it on my old pc which i thought was really good i could only run it on the lowest settings okay but i mean my point is does it look like it deserves the remaster does it look like the it de- i'm sorry it deserves the crisis name in terms of can it play crisis like do you you can definitely tell that it's dated um but it is still a lot cleaner and better looking than a lot of games out today okay crisis Uh, remaster i assume you're going to play through that that's like an afternoon for you well i mean (laughs) a 10 hour game trying 10 hour game takes cb three hours somehow Trying, trying. Would it be funny if I'm, you, I'm actually if we found out CB invented time travel, but all he actually uses it for is to play more games. <laughs> you don't know my secrets. That's that's actually a great Twilight Zone episode or something. That'd be amazing. Come on, I I do tell you guys all the time. Time is relative. <laughs> I like it. All right, Crisis Remastered. We do have one other game to share with you. Sat down with Alyssa to talk about a game that she loved. So I'm going to play that review for you right now. Well, hello again, Alyssa. Hi, Scott. You are quite the regular now. This is what, like three times in the past month you've reviewed a game for us? I think so, yeah. That's awesome. Well, you're here this time to talk about a game called Paradise Killer, which definitely is up your alley. I just see a game with this kind of art style and I immediately think of you. Uh, Murder mystery set with some like anime characters and lots of dialogue. Tell me about Paradise Killer. Okay, so it's basically what you just described but you play as a woman that has been exiled for millions and millions of years and you're on an island that every time it um the island doesn't succeed they regenerate a new island so you're on the 25th island but you've been exiled and you're brought back because there has been a murder on the island and you have to decide who on the island is the killer okay and Paradise is the woman that was killed, correct? No, Paradise is the island. Oh, okay. I'm very confused. No, uh, I'm trying to... Rem- actually, I can't remember the name of the person that was killed. I don't even know <laughs> if that's mentioned, actually. Oh, I remember really? the person that they have accused, Henry, and he's possessed by a demon. But I don't remember the name of the actual person, if it was even mentioned. Okay, so how's the gameplay work? It looked like there were some investigations and lots of dialogue. Uh, how do you it, play it? It is a lot of dialogue. It is a pretty open world, but you just go around. You go to all the different inhabitants of the island. You talk to them, and you gather evidence. There's evidence scattered around the island. You can get these things called blood crystals, which are the island's currency. And it's just going around investigating, pretty much. 
All right. Now, the trailer made it sound like there could be possible different outcomes for who the killer is. Is there just one killer, or is it different every time you play it? Oh, you can accuse anyone you want. I think there is one certain killer, but you could accuse the totally incorrect person. Okay, and what happens if you if you guess wrong? I have not gotten to that point yet. Oh, okay. But I, I would assume the game ends, and you gotcha. just have to... Live with your choice. Okay. Well, I, I get the impression you dig you dig this game. It just screams Alyssa, but is this one you recommend our listeners check out? If you're into games such as uh, Phoenix Wright, where you go and investigate, uh-huh. definitely. I do think the open world is kind of a hindrance because it's so big and fast travel costs currency that you could use upgrading your laptop that you use in the game and um, gathering evidence on people. So that part's a little bit of a hindrance. So if you're not really into uh, open worlds, might not like it. But if sure. you're into murder mysteries, investigating, stuff like that, then you're going to like this. Okay. It sounds interesting. I do love a good murder mystery. I don't know if the art style is my cup of tea. It's, it, it feels very Japanese, which isn't a bad thing. It's just not for me. Yeah. I but, understand it. Yeah, it's very Japanese. <laughs> yeah, very, very Japanese, but... This one does come from Kaizen Gameworks, and it was published by Fellow Traveler. And we've got to give thanks to Evolve PR for hooking you up with the review copy of that one. It sounds like you're digging it, and we'll be looking forward to a written review from you in the near future. I'm excited, yeah. All right. Well, thanks again for stopping by, Alyssa. You have a wonderful afternoon, okay? You too. All right, bye. Bye. All right, what else are you guys catching up on? Anything interesting? Uh, I've been playing a lot of Tony Hawk 1 and 2. Oh, man, me too. It's so good. It's freaking sublime, man. It really is. It's, it's, <laughs> I, I, I 100% of the first Tony Hawk. Uh, I am one level away from 100% Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. And uh, that uh, turns out that's the game where I had all the nostalgia for, man, where I was like, oh, I know this secret area and this secret area. Like, it's, it's, I, what a good yeah, game. I could, I could definitely agree. Like, I remember two more than one. I agree. I agree. Um, but I've been playing another. Tony Hawk's slightly older gem. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, the uh, second best review game of all time, according to Metacritic. I can believe that. Hmm. Second only to Ocarina of Time. Hmm. Anyway, that's just a fun factoid. Tony Hawk is very, very good. Scott is a fool for not having played these video games before. <laughs> and it's funny when you, I don't know if you're like going out of your way to get all the stat points, CB. I have been. It's it's pretty hilarious when you like go back to play as another skater and it looks feels like they're crawling after you dump oh, yeah. all these stat points into one character. I'm playing. I, rem- I remember that on GameCube. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. I mean, I mean, the whole games are ridiculous. You know, I mean, these specials are impractical and impossible. Hear- hearing all the noises that like your character makes, like when they take falls, though, is hilarious. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I'm playing as a uh, Liz, Lizzie something. I don't know. I play this Bob Bob Burnquist. I I love I love that they made all the characters age appropriate or all the uh, skaters age appropriate. That's so funny. Yes, They're all just a bunch of old men now. <laughs> they, well, they are. Well, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I really wish they could have put Bam in there. Did, was he was he in the first ones or was he didn't join till Underground? Did he? I think he was in three. It's possible. So I, I remember him being in one of them that I owned back then. And I only owned one, two, and three. So right. Underground is I love Underground. Anyway, Tony Hawk, play it, everybody. Yeah. Um I've also been playing Terminator Resistance. I sorry. I just I just Googled this game really. I keep waiting for it to go on a sale. I want to play it. Yeah. You'll only find it digitally. Right. I this this has been since uh, Sean, Sean Coates re- reviewed it for us, yep. I have been trying to track down a physical copy of it since that review, and I finally found one. Oh, oh really? really? Where'd you find it? It was at a GameStop in Southern Illinois <laughs> when I was down there, <laughs> wow. and it, was, it wasn't even listed in their inventory. It was actually in the clearance section because it's actually been delisted out of their program really so did, you get a, did you get a good price for it then oh i got a great price on what it. are you what are you playing it on what are you playing it on i'm playing it on xbox man i uh, sorry i really want to play this game looks 
I, I think it looks so good. It 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 plays great. Yeah, especially for the I I love this game. I've heard it's got a shockingly like, good story too. Yeah, it it, it really Sean Cubs, it, it gets its it gets its hooks in you real quick. Didn't it? Didn't it like do poorly? It did not get reviewed by critics well, but uh, it's not a game for them. Let's be honest. Yeah, I've definitely found that there's been a lot of games that don't get reviewed by critics well, but when people play it, they tend to love it. Right. And I love the Terminator mythos. This mm. is the time. This is the time period of Terminator that I love, that I care about. Yeah, it, it's it's the in between. Yeah, the, the the apocalyptic, or is it? Oh, yeah, it's it's before the Judgment Day. No, no, it's after Judgment okay. Day, but before like the the um, how I've been. Uh, so far from what I've gathered from the story, it's like before John Connor becomes like a really, really big thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's like the, the robot apocalypse, like from Terminator Salvation. That's the stuff I care about in Terminator. Yeah. Dude, I uh, like Terminator and, Salvation. I love Terminator Salvation. Absolutely. I'm so glad you're here. And, I get ridiculed regularly for like, liking that movie. I had, no, I'm, I'm talking about the game. Oh, the game's also good. Yeah. I did. I mean, it was, a, it was a. Easy achievements, easy a thousand achievements. That was the only reason I played it, but I had fun doing it. Well, this this it's definitely easy, easy achievements for this game too. Oh, yeah? Is it? Because there's like eighteen achievements, and most of them are hundreds. Nice. And they're story driven. I feel like I gotta check out all my local game shops now, just to see. Good. Like like I said, good luck because it took me a year to track down this, and now that I'm playing it, it for me. I'm so glad. Like I'm enjoying it. You'll you'll have to borrow my copy, Scott, when I'm done with it. Yeah. Cause it's, maybe if it's we get actually, Zach to move up here, he could borrow it too. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> it, it it is definitely a, a hidden gem oh, on the man. Xbox. Is that is that this year? Uh I believe it was last year. Yeah, I think it was last year. Okay. Because the the first pressing was just before COVID really started hitting and they were gonna do the second print run of it. And COVID hit, and they couldn't print the second round of discs, which is why it's only digital now. Interesting. Uh, well, I won't linger on it long, but uh, I also played some more Undermine. Got through the fourth boss. Got one more boss left for my first run. And uh, this game needs to be on Switch. This would be a great Switch game. And also, much like Super Meat Boy, this game has a stupid amount of content even after you beat the main game. There is so much more to do. After you finish it, I, I don't know if I'm going to do it because some of it gets really, I opened up like this hard mode. There's like a, there's like an extra mine that you go to where they, they kind of break the way the formula works in the game and makes you, makes you play well without the, I don't know, the safety net that you have in the regular game. Uh, it's very interesting. The currency is much more valuable. Um, it's hard. It's very, very hard. But the main game. It, it does this thing like most roguelikes do where you get a good run where the, the stars align and you just get the right equipment that makes make you feel like a god. And unfortunately, it takes a long time for you to get those godlike runs uh, to, for those to happen. But it is, this is a great game. I love Undermine so much. I'm shocked how much I like Undermine and I will continue to play it. It's going to be an interesting game of the year. It's going to be up there, man. It's going to be, I've put so many hours into it. The timer is completely broken in the game, though, still, I told you. I think I'm up to 245 hours now, and there's no way I've put that many hours in that I game. I don't know. That's possible. That you know of. Right. Yeah. Some, somebody's sneaking in there. But anyway, yeah, Undermine, play that game. It's so good. And Drew Ross, thank you for making me play that one, because I, I, I probably would have skipped it. Uh, anyway, speaking of our community, we got to say hello to some new people over on Facebook, which uh, if you haven't joined yet, do so. It is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the go cast. Got to say hello to Eric Persinger, Stephen Asendorf, Jonathan Charles, Amy Graves, Mike Dragan, and Jesse Galvin. Also, we have a new person over in Discord. Lots of great communications going over there. Uh, just stay out of the not safe for work channel if you have a weak stomach um, and or are easily offended because... Holy cow, there's some stuff that goes on in that channel. Uh, but uh, lots of great people over there. Uh, Murdoch is a new member over there. So be sure to stop by and say hello. No new iTunes reviews this week. However, we got a couple new written reviews over on our website, thegamingoutsider.com. The first is actually a video review from Rel, who uh, reviewed The Adventures of Pip. 
And Alyssa has a written review for The Suicide of Rachel Foster, which you'll want to check out over on the, on the site. Again, that is thegamingoutsider.com. And now we'll jump into it from the outside in topic. So as we mentioned above, we finally have release dates and prices for both the PS5 and the Xbox One. Naturally, both pieces of news came out the day after we recorded our last two podcasts. But now that it's official, I want to know what your guys' plans are for release day. And I also asked our community what their plans were with a poll on social media. So I've got the results for that uh, here. I'll, I'll wait until we're done talking about it. But before we get to the actual specifics... Zach, you did such an awesome job last week doing some research and talk talk to us about PlayStation. So I asked you again to do a little bit of research. Uh, One of the big questions is about what games are going to be available on launch on each of these consoles. And I feel like nobody's talking about this. Uh, They've been talking about games that are available, but not necessarily at launch. So I asked Zach, what games are available to each console at launch that are only available on that console? So basically, we're looking at a list of games that are the reason to buy that console. We're taking away Game Pass. We're taking away um, games that are on both consoles. What can I play on just the PS5, and what can I play just on the Series X or S, Zach? Quick question. Does PC count? Or Hmm. you want want to make it strictly what you can only play on the console? I, I I don't know how to answer that. Um, I mean, I'll, I can run you down the list that that I made. Okay, um, let's do let's do just just console exclusive only because if you can play it on PC, you can play it on PC. But okay. also, a lot of console players don't get into PC. So, well, Astro's Playroom is coming pre-installed on every PlayStation Five. Right. Uh, Demon Souls will be available at launch for seventy dollars as a uh, Sony first party game, uh, and then Destruction All Stars as a Sony first party game. Uh, that is uh, impossible to find information about. Uh, it's weirdly, weirdly hard to find information about it. Huh. Uh, it looks like a platformer slash vehicular combat game, but it had like one trailer that doesn't really tell you anything about the gameplay. Very strange. That is strange, but that's available at launch day. Yes, that'll be a launch day game. Uh, and then uh, if you're if you're not counting, so if you don't want stuff that's also on PC, that's it. That's the end of the list. That's Xbox, it? Xbox does not have... Because Xbox puts all their games on PC. Oh, okay. Uh, well, technically, sorry, on the Xbox Series X and S, Yakuza Like a Dragon will technically be exclusive for three days. Okay. Before, because the, uh, the console launches on a Tuesday and Yakuza will be with it, but Yakuza won't come to uh, PS4 and Xbox One and PC until Friday that week. And it does not currently have a PS5 version, though. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, but if you do count things available on PC, then Godfall is on PS5, and Tetris Effect Connected is coming to to the Xbox as well, and that is an exclusive until 2021, uh, during which point all versions of Tetris Effect will update with the connected part. Okay. So basically, even if we're including the PC games, we're looking at four games on PS5 and two games on Xbox Series X that you will only be able to play on their respective consoles. Right, so really only one on Xbox, because Yakuza is three days. Sure. But I, I guess, but I thought it'd be funny to include, because it is technically exclusive for three whole days. Right. So yeah, so four versus two um, that, you, that you need these next-gen consoles for. CB, does that do anything to your desire for one over the other at all? No, not really. I mean... I mean... It is disappointing, though, for a new console generation to have this few launch titles. Exclusives. I mean, there's going to be launch titles that are on both, right? Yeah. And then, and then, yeah. and then you know, like Miles Morales is PS5 and PS4. Right. Yeah, kind of thing. But, like, th- 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 and that's kind of why I wanted to bring it up, because I kind of had the sneaking suspicion that this is the case. I didn't know until you brought the list here to the show. And that's insane to me that we're fighting about all of this. Or not we per se, but like the console war people are fighting about this. Well, well this, I'm going to go to the one that's got more games, or I'm going to go to the one that's got the game pass, or I'm going to go to the one that's the cheaper price. If it all comes down to games, there's nothing on this list that screams, I have to buy that console over the other. 
there sure ain't nothing on this list that I'm willing to pay $500 to play. There you go. I will say Demon Souls looks really good from a guy that did not get into those games. And granted, whoever was playing that trailer in the PS5 showcase had to be playing that game on easy mode because he made it look super easy. Or maybe I'm just very terrible at those kind of games. He just like he it, was breezing through it. After you beat Dark Souls once, it it's kind of looks that easy. Oh, okay. I would say. I mean, it was like one hit kills. Everything was just yeah, like a one swipe. A lot of enemies are. Okay. They're just they're just designed to. It's they're they're set up so, you know, don't get hit by every time you get hit by them, you have that much less health for the boss, basically. Gotcha. So your your goal is to try to kill all those guys without getting hit, essentially. Makes sense. Anyway, I oh. thought that was interesting. CB, you got more to add? Well, I was just going to say, because I'm, I've always, I was wondering about this. I think this is the, the slimmest, uh, launch title list. I launch like, yeah, because I remember with the, the Xbox one, we had like rise Right. Son of Rome. <laughs> right. I forgot. Which, it, it wasn't a terrible game. I never, I've played worse. I never played it. I never played it. But I beat it. It wasn't bad. But four, four is a five. Right. Uh, Dead Rising 3. Was Titanfall at launch or was that? No, it was like the March after, wasn't it? Yeah. It was way but, but, but for exclusives. Right. Right. Titanfall was an exclusive. The first one. Oh, oh the yeah, first it was. one was just Xbox, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, and th- then there was like Knack, Flower. Right. And a few other ones for the the PS4, but I think I think there was like eight on each mm-hmm. on launch. But so really, my my point to this whole thing is that people say they're buying these for the games. I I'm calling them out. <laughs> it's basically what I'm saying because if you're buying a console for any of these six games at launch, that doesn't make any sense to me. I I completely agree with you on that. Yeah, I mean. I think most of it is you get caught up in the hype and, you know, it's the fear of missing out. FOMO is a yep. huge effect and so and much brand in, loyalty, a little bit of brand loyalty, but I think that plays less into it than you think based on the way you look every console generation, how it shifts back and forth. Mm-hmm. I don't think brand loyalty is as loyal as uh, people think it is, but I think so much of marketing for everything these days preys directly on the fear of missing out. Mm-hmm. That it, it's not at all surprising to me that people are scrambling to make sure that they're one of the first people to get it. And, and you know what? A lot of people just do get excited about being the first at something. That's true. I'm guilty of that. I'll yeah. admit it. I mean, I I actually am. I'm I'm picking up what I'm picking up for the specific reason of when's the restock's going to happen, right? Like that's that's my thing. Plus, then I don't have to worry about chasing them. That's my thing. Is I would rather, and we'll get. Let's go ahead, and jump into it, because I'm gonna. I, I have things to say about that too. But what route are you guys planning to go? We've got the PlayStation Five Optical, PlayStation Five Digital, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S. Are you planning on getting any or any two? Or are you gonna wait? Are you gonna? Are you still undecided? Where do you guys land on uh, on day one? Well, you know, uh, Rico Ramirez summed it up perfectly for me. I will get a PS5 physical at some point, but not at launch. First time in a long time, I'm skipping a launch system. Same story here, man. Like, PS4, you know, I got it as soon as I possibly could, like within a month or two. Uh, same story when the 360 came out. It's uh, but... Or even when the PS2 came out. I remember being a kid and rushing out and grabbing one. But there's... There's nothing for me. Like, there's no driving force for what appears to be the first year of either console for me. In both cases, I will get the $500 version just to make sure I have physical. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I, I'm willing to pay the extra 100 bucks for a disk drive, whatever. And <laughs> Plus, it's a 4K player, right? I guess so, yeah. Um, but it's just... Honestly, like like both of these announcements, I was just kind of like, as soon as Miles Morales was announced for PS4, I was already willing to sacrifice Miles and just play it later. Mm-hmm. But now that it's on PS4, I got, I got nothing that I mm-hmm. need to get these consoles for. All right, interesting. Plus, you'll have your loading screens. <laughs> I mean, I don't care about loading screens. 
Oh come on! Why oh, the, the oh the subway travel loading screens? Yeah, yeah. You'll have subway travel. You're you are correct. Yeah, I'm sure they'll get you, a shot or something like that. Did you guys hear a sucker punch intentionally slow down the loading on Ghost of Tsushima? No. Because, Why? Because that's how they got like the tips information out there. Because they were doing such an uh, an unstructured kind of game. The the open world fast travel loaded so fast that they didn't have time for the tips to be there. But they were as an essential teaching tool for the player. Huh. So I slowed it down on purpose. That's interesting. Wild. Hmm. Wild story. CB, what about you? What's your plan? Well, Adam Bentz from our community summed it up the best. Both day one. Both day preferably one. Preferably Xbox. <laughs> well, you've got a PS5 pre-order, don't you? Supposedly. <laughs> Supposedly. <laughs> Depends on where you order, because I got some more information on that today. Because you're not going to get day one. Yours is Walmart, isn't it? Where where did you get yours from? I got mine from Target. Target. Okay. As long as they're not the same. Because I found out that apparently Amazon, GameStop, and a few other places, if you pre-ordered more than one from the same address, they're axing them. Good. Oh, that makes sense. Good. So, bravo. Well, to I'm, be fair, I, I have two pre-ordered, but one of them is for you. <laughs> so, yes. Because I'm a little yes. more quick on the draw, apparently. Well, that and I didn't have time to make a Walmart, a, 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 yeah, Walmart <laughs> account login. <laughs> I will say I got caught up in the hype enough to get it in my Walmart cart, and then I go into checkout, and I was like, what am I doing? I don't want, <laughs> I don't want this. Right. If you had it in your cart, you won the game. Yeah, I, I so. already had the satisfaction of knowing I could have gotten one, but I don't. I don't need to um, rush. Like, this, like, the Switch I was willing to refresh it for because I wanted to play Breath of the Wild so badly. Right. And there's nothing on PS5 that was making me do that. Breath of the Wild was enough, too. Yes, yeah, so Breath of the Wild was a game I was happy, and even after beating it, was still happy to have paid $300 to play. Right. I will, I will say Breath of the Wild is the game that made me go out and buy a Switch, it, yeah. and then I never played it on my Switch. <laughs> tremendous, <laughs> it's such a tremendous game. You played it more on mine, didn't you? I played and beat it on yours, yeah. and then I bought it for mine, and I've never played it That's on amazing. mine. That's amazing. Um, but I, it, it's a little disheartening because with with the with the snafu that happened, yeah. Um, I got a call from some GameStop managers today who are friends of mine with the Xbox One, uh, and they did not get big numbers for these. Uh, each one of the game stops in town only has five. Holy cow. That does seem low. Five, five physical, uh, and some of them have more digitals, but, uh, the game stop that I'm going to be working with tomorrow, they have five physical, two digital. For the X? For the, X. for the Series X and the S. Here's my question. How's that going to work, by the way, for pre-ordering? Like, can you pre-order and do the payment plan? Um, specific stores have it. Some stores don't. So, like, if I go to, through, like, Microsoft, can I buy it just directly through them and do the payment plan? Yes. Uh, it sounds like the way to get the payment plan is to do it directly through Microsoft. Because after talking with some GameStop employees, they're not even 100% sure how that's going to work. Yeah, well, with GameStop, you might, make, you might get it for cheap because they might be out of business for you to pay it off. <laughs> well, you, uh, you, they still will have... See, that's the thing that they, they're not sure about because you have to make the payment plan and everything. What, like, you have the console in your possession. What happens if you miss a payment? Well, I assume your credit gets dinged. There's no credit check. There's no credit check? Nope. Well, you have a credit card on file, I would assume, right? I can go get a credit card from Walmart. Put 100 bucks on it. Right, but well, even Redbox didn't take vanilla gift cards. They did for a while. Well, they did for a while. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure Microsoft is wise enough to not accept vanilla gift cards. But what's to stop me from opening a bank account somewhere? And well, sure. For like 100 bucks, and then purchasing it, and then draining the account and closing it. Well, there is, of course, your moral standing. There is. It is a crime. But There is that. Yeah. <laughs> but, Minor but it details. makes me wonder, but it makes me wonder what Microsoft is going to do. Are they going to, like, lock your account or just system lock you? 
Oh, that'd be cool. They just brick your like, console. Brick, yeah, yeah, just oh, you didn't pay. Brick your console. But that ma- that makes things even more interesting. Let's say you weren't paying attention and you overdrew your account, mm-hmm. and Microsoft's like, oh, you didn't make the payment. Brick your account. I mean, brick your system. Did they give you a five day grace. Whoops. No, it's, you're- hopefully. Well, you're right. It does bring up questions. I just assumed there was a credit check the whole time. Uh, from from what I've been told, nope. Does that mean I could pre-order an Xbox Series X tomorrow for thirty five bucks? Yes, it does. I might just. I mean, you might. This is like why not? And see, it, like know? that that is the brilliance behind this payment plan. Like it, it makes it so much more enticing that you're like. I don't have to drive, drive 500 and like 50 bucks tomorrow. I just have to pay $53. I need like $35. Right. Awesome. And if you have, if you have Xbox one already, Oh, now I have game pass ultimate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On top of it. Like it is brilliant. Look me up. So you told me twice. I will. I already know the game set near my house has five people waiting outside it right now. Right now. I drove by before we started recording tonight. There are people waiting outside already. Wow. Why wouldn't you? I didn't see anybody waiting outside for the PS5. Well, we didn't know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) yeah. Retailers weren't thrilled about it either, man. Yeah. That was a real Sega Saturn move. Yeah. I, I do think that it is interesting, though, that each each GameStop actually already has an idea of like how many they have, whereas with the PlayStation, nobody knew how many how many anybody had. What time is it going on sale tomorrow? Ten a.m. Ten a.m. That's kind of close. I'm thinking when my break is at work. If I'm going to be, I have to adjust some schedules tomorrow and push back one of my meetings a few minutes. I would almost feel I would almost feel betrayed if you got a PlayStation Five but on an Xbox Series X. Well, that's the thing is like, well, let me answer the question here because I am, I have a PS5 pre-ordered. I have the physical one pre-ordered just because I couldn't help myself when they were coming available. And like you said, first, got to be the first one there. But now that I have one pre-ordered, I feel like I have the option because although I've pre-ordered one, I'm not necessarily committed to it. You know what I mean? Because I'm in the same boat as you. I don't really feel like I need either one of them. I just like new shiny things. and. I, I just I wonder how many people are going to be having a uh, buyer's remorse for these consoles, especially with the world's largest console. <laughs> yeah, that is, a, that is true. That is pretty large. Uh, yeah, I, I there's no way I'm not going to try to pre-order one tomorrow, especially if I can pre-order it only put down like thirty five bucks. There's just I mean, can you agree, can you grab me up one too if you get it in your card? I mean, well, apparently I can't because they start <laughs> asking if you you know do it with the same account or whatever. So I don't I don't know. Yeah, I, I've actually been told that as well with, um, from the two managers that I talked to, because you know how many times people are like, well, I'm pre-ordering one for me, and then one for my brother, and one for my sister. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. You can't do it. Because how, how do you know who's telling the yeah, truth, and it's, it's just a gray area, but. So yeah. that's where I'm at. I still really just want the Xbox, because I'm in that ecosystem, and especially well, after the news today. Sorry, that I, news dropping right before the that the pre-orders is also another brilliant stroke. I didn't even think about that till now. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, but it, it really is like twenty five, thirty five bucks up front, and you get like, why not? Yep, they've put themselves in such a great position of why not. And I knew PS Five was not going to have a install plan because they are far too er- they're in way too an arrogant mood right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just yeah, man. So. Scott, Scott was here the night that I got the pre-order for for the PlayStation, and I had to go break the news to the wife. <laughs> Not happy. When I told her, I'm like, "Oh, tomorrow I'm gonna pre pre-ordering the 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 new Xbox," and she's like, "Great, how much is that gonna cost?" And I'm like, "Well, you know how I pay like fifteen dollars a month for this," and she's like, "Yeah," and I'm like, "Well, it's just double that. That's it." And she's like, "What are you talking about? You don't have to pay fi- like five six hundred dollars up front." And I'm like, "No." That's the great thing. And she's like, oh, well, I guess that's not so bad. So the fact that even she was like, oh, well, I guess that's not so bad. Yeah. And coming from the my wife who hates video games, like, right. 
that kind of blew me away. Well, that's the thing is I can come up with 35 bucks a month. You know what I mean? I can, right. It, it's, it's difficult for me now. I've only got about 70% of the, <laughs> about half of the money for my PS5 that I've pre-ordered. You know, so I've got to, you know, start selling blood or plasma or something. <laughs> um, but coming up with 35 bucks, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit easier to do. But uh, yeah, I like having the option. But if I had to pick one or the other, my after watching that showcase, I was kind of sold on PS5 because I thought that presentation was really great. They showed some cool stuff. Their their PlayStation Now is looking more attractive. Although I don't really need to play any of those games anymore. Played most of them. Uh, the just some of the other upcoming stuff was looking more enticing than Xbox One. But after seeing this day one stuff, I'm with Zach. I don't need either. But you know me. I'm going to wind up with one of them. Yeah, of course. And I am going to go physical as well. I know I sound like a hypocrite, but uh, Captain Digital goes physical. Well, what? I like options, man. I well, like as, options. I would say if if he's pre-ordering consoles just for peace of mind, it only makes sense that he would get a disc drive for peace of yeah. mind. And not for like, yeah. and it also opens up your backwards compatibility options. Yep, especially I've got some disc games for, for one system. Yeah, well, you could. I mean, but your PS4 games, right? But it is nice to know you can put an Xbox, the original Xbox disc into the newest Xbox console and play the game is pretty, mm -hmm. pretty great. It's pretty rad. And then it opens up like if I want to buy one of those older games, even 360, right? It, that actually makes me really happy because I have so many 360 games that I never got around to actually playing mm -hmm. and I have the discs for. And they never made the like jump to being compatible for the Xbox One. Right. And I hate having to, like, unhook my Xbox One to plug in my 360. Now I don't have to do that anymore. So if I have downtime and I'm like, oh, I can actually work on my backlog. Well, that's why I, I don't even need my 360 anymore. I don't need my, you know, I don't, won't need my Xbox One. I just have this one box and I'm set. That's, that's yeah. exciting to me. Yeah, yeah, I guess I just had the revelation right now that, like, even for PS5, you know, I, I still have my PS3 hooked up, like, because I play it pretty regularly, but mm -hmm. I won't need to keep the PS4 hooked up, will I? No. No. Huh. It's weird to think about. You can make, you can put that beautiful spider man on the on the shelf. I'll frame, frame my console. Yeah. spider my console. So, I guess my final answer here is that I'm undecided. I'm genuinely undecided. I've got one pre-ordered, just so I have the option. I like options. And uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. That might, that might help <laughs> to you know figure out what I'm going to do. Uh, would you like? Would you guys like to know what our community said? I'm dying, yes. dying to know. So I did two different polls: one on Facebook and one on Twitter. And unfortunately, I could not combine them together because Twitter limited me to only four options for a poll, so I had to separate them. So we'll start with Facebook. Uh, we had 114 people uh, actually take the poll. And the options were, you know, PlayStation 5 Optical, PlayStation 5 Digital, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, neither, both, or undecided. Uh, there was a 1% vote for undecided, 2%, this was shocking to me, 2% for the Xbox Series S. Yeah, because, it, well, come on, the, the diehard gamers are going to go to the X. Right, and I guess, yeah, we're in a gaming community, so that, yeah, I guess that makes sense. 6% uh, PlayStation 5 Digital. Oh. Both was uh, 11%. Uh, we had 16% for the Xbox Series X. We had 18% for the PS5 Optical. And 47% said neither. Wow. Which was shocking to me. 54 I mean, votes for neither. That tells you what a different world we're in with the, than Twitter is, you know? That's a good point. And Twitter seems um, like everybody's just... Well, like you said earlier, the... I'm not surprised by that number with the neither. Same. Because of the lack of exclusive titles at launch. Right. And that was kind of why I had Zach do that research for us, because makes sense. Uh, Twitter was a little bit of a different story. For obvious reasons, I couldn't put uh, both neither or undecided, so those were removed from this poll. Uh, but 5% said PlayStation 5 Digital. 14% said the Xbox Series S. 35% said the Xbox Series X. And 50% said PlayStation 5 Optical. It's almost like every video game podcast, I won't shut up about how 
everything is digital now might be wrong. <laughs> hey, I didn't say tomorrow. Hey, I said I actually was not calling future. you out directly. Oh, uh, well, I yeah. feel I listen to another video game podcast and I just feel like it's almost like a weird. Like, like they want of, it to happen. Yeah. Like it almost like a weird form of activism mm -hmm. where they like want everyone desperately to be digital with them. It's just very strange. I mean, Game Pass, Game Pass really does feel like there's a huge push to digital. Of course, yeah. So, yeah, with the and as much, and I will admit, as much as I hate it, I will agree to a point. I mean, there will always be a physical option out there somewhere. <laughs> but yes, the the world is moving to digital. Of course, there we go, man. I, I don't know. I'm almost like, do I just, should I just get the Series S, honestly? Because I only play it for exclusives on Xbox anyway. You sound like you're sold on it. Like, you just, I, like, I don't even know why, if, if the S that. is for you, 25 bucks a month. Right. Well, I was thinking, I was like, I need the X, but do I really need the X? I don't think the, so. Do you have a 4K TV? Yeah, but I'm also, I'm not that guy. Who cares? Do you have a lot of physical Xbox One and or Xbox 360 games? I got a lot of physical original xbox and 360 games but i can already play those on xbox one. Oh, so you're gonna keep the old xbox one sure i did i i've regretted too many times in my life selling a, an old console okay even though it, even though it seems impractical with this generation jump but first of all then i can just have them all you know like on my museum yeah, but you, one day you you don't have a classroom like i do that you can just throw an old console in and true still keep it but also share it with your Students, but but then on the other hand, I do still routinely play my original. I play my original Xbox games on an Xbox anyway. Usually, True. what am I doing? True. Well, hey, look at it this way: if you're debating on the X or the S, I mean, the really only price difference is what ten bucks a month. A large, a large Starbucks drink, right? Like once a month. Yeah, once a month. Starbucks drinks are twenty five bucks now. Ten. No, no. I said the difference oh, for the between the S. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. That was fun, guys. I mean, it's interesting how we kind of all had slightly different answers to the question. But uh, next week, we have not put our topic up yet, but stay tuned. It's going to be a good one because next week's episode is going to be a, a live episode that will be available for our Patreon contributors to watch live on YouTube with a private link. So if that's something you'd like to do, Stay tuned for that. Watch us record this thing live. That'll be very interesting for sure. Uh, stay tuned for the topic on that one. Any suggestions, send them our way. But that is going to do it for this episode of The Gaming Outsider. Zach, any parting words before we get out of here? Sure, I finished, hey, I finished the Thrawn trilogy. I got very excited about this on Twitter. Which okay. is the first like Star Wars EU trilogy from back in the stuff that doesn't count anymore, according to Disney. Right. And uh, I haven't read it in probably 20 years, and it's absolutely phenomenal. So that was great. Uh, Very cool. Shout out to Mara Jade, who, it, yeah. which I, who I always loved, but I forgot how much of the Thrawn trilogy is really a Mara Jade story. So that was very exciting to revisit. And Thrawn is such a good villain that uh, I think we'll see more of him in the, in the Disney era Star Wars going forward. Nice. CB, how yeah. about you? Uh, finish Lucifer. Oh, finally. Yeah. It, I was really worried with Netflix taking over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. They did a good job. And I can't wait for the last like eight episodes to come out now. So between that and then I watched Jurassic Park uh, Camp Cretaceous. Oh, really? I, I, I'm actually excited about the show. I didn't know it was bad. out. Yeah. It's already out. Huh. Already watched the entire se season. I know Spielberg insisted they pulled no punches when it came to the killing of characters. So that's cool. Nice. Yeah. As for me, I've got a weird recommendation. It's not a movie or comic or game related, but uh, I'm not endorsed by this company whatsoever. But I discovered, going to laugh at me, guys, but I discovered a winery uh, just north of us in Milton, what? Wisconsin. <laughs> And I'm not a big wine guy, but uh, we went and did a wine tasting for fun when we were on uh, our anniversary vacation. And this place is called Timber Hill Winery up in Milton. And they have a bottle of wine that is called Crancord. So it's like cranberry, Concord mixed together. You know how when you watch people drink wine in movies and it just looks delicious and then you actually get a bottle of wine and it's like 
what am I drinking? This wine tastes like what it looks like they're drinking <laughs> when you're watching a movie is the best way I can describe it. So, so tastes, tastes like red. It, it, <laughs> it tastes like red. Uh, it, it's not the sweet, it's a sweet wine for sure. The Cran Cord, but, uh, it's not, uh, it's, it's not, you know, smoky. It's not super dry. It just goes down really good. And it, and it, it tastes like what you want it to taste like when you see someone in a movie drinking it. It's, it's really good. So. Highly recommend Timber Hill Winery. And again, we are not endorsed by them whatsoever. I just stumbled across it. So anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks so much for listening. The Gaming Outsider is produced by Mr. Nate Lucas. And all the music you hear is written and performed by Grant Henry of Stemmage and Metroid Metal. His website is stemmagemusic.com. Please be sure to email us if you have any questions or concerns. The address is feedback at thegamingoutsider.com. Until next week, I'm Scott Clark with Zach Parkerson and Chris Berensmeyer. And we are the gaming outsider and remember there's no such thing as a bad game just games that aren't for you